And good morning. We thank you for joining the Come As You Are ministry for another beautiful and sunny Sunday morning that the Lord has allowed us to see. And as always, we love to say this is a day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. For God is good all the time and all the time God is good. We thank you for your continued prayers and support of this ministry. And just know that we are praying for you all as well and we love you all. And we pray that God is blessing you all in ways you never thought you would be blessed and is opening doors for you and closing doors that don't mean you any good. Right now, let's get right into what God has for us. We're looking at Psalms 150 in its entirety. Psalms 150 verses 1 through 6. And it reads, praise you the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the tremble and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him, praise him upon the loud cymbal. And praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. And we'll repeat verse 6 because verse 6 is our main focus today. Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank and we praise you once again for another great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people, Lord God. And as always, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, O oh God, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Lord, we ask you to take us completely out of self, Lord God. Father God, we ask you to speak through us and to us, Lord God, and help us all to stay focused on your word, your will, and your way, Father. Father God, we ask you to come on in and dwell among us, Father God. And Father, just give us a word from on high that only you can give. Father, because we never know what that next person may be going through or dealing with. So Father God, we ask you to just touch right now. Bless us all right now, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to be using for a subject, put a praise on it. Or if you want to make it personal, you can say, I'm going to put a praise on it. But however, we're talking about putting a praise on it. Um, the other day I was riding home and um, Tasha Cobb's song came on. I've heard it so many times, but it was something particular about this day that really just caught my attention. And she kept saying in the song, I'm going to put a praise on it. I'm going to put a praise on it. I'm going to put a praise on it. And I said, okay, I'm like, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? What are which direction are you trying to go? Because, you know, most of the time we hear songs and just being real, we hear songs and a lot of times we just get caught up in the beat. We're not, we're not really paying attention to the words a lot of times. Or if it's Christian music, we just know, hey, they're talking about God and we're just waving our hands and everything. But we really don't understand the true meaning behind some of the songs that we hear. We really don't. And so I was trying, I was asking God, God, what do you mean? What are you trying to explain to me? And I realized then when God began to speak to me, what she was saying when she said, I'm going to put a praise on. In other words, I'm going to praise him in advance for what he's about to do for me. I'm going to praise him in advance for the things that he's about to bring into my life. I'm going to praise him in advance for the healing that I've been looking forward to all this time. I'm going to praise him in advance for bringing the joy back to my life that the devil has stole from me. I'm going to praise him in advance for that child that I've been praying for that just seemed like they just won't do right. But I'm praising God in advance that one day everything is going to be all right. One day God's going to turn it around. I'm praising God in advance for the blessings and for the doors that he's about to open in my life. And when I begin to think about that, I say, you know what, Lord, we have a reason to praise you each and every day. Why? You wake us up every morning clothed in our right mind with a mind whether you pray or not. He's showing you and letting you know that you ought to praise him, that you ought to pray to him. Why? He's the one that takes care of you. He's the one that opens the doors for you. He's the one that makes a way out of no way for you. He's the one that moves those bad things out of your life in order to bring the good things in. He's the one that keeps you where you need to be rooted and grounded in him. He's the one that moves those people out of your life that don't need to be there and place those people that there that can lead you and help lead you and guide you into the right direction. 
So what does that mean? I'm gonna put a praise on him. I know it's not all it's not here yet, but I'm gonna praise him like it's already done. I'm gonna praise him like the doors are already open. I'm gonna praise him like I'm already walking in the victory that he has for me. I'm gonna praise him anyhow. And Psalm 150 lets us know that we have a mandate to praise God. We have a command to praise him. Why? Because he's done so much for us. Psalm 150 said, we are, it said, starts off saying, praise ye the Lord. It said, praise God in the sanctuary. In the church, you ought not be ashamed to praise God, really, no matter where you go. But even in the church, especially, you ought not never be ashamed to praise God. Why? Because that's his house. I'm giving God the praise just for being able to come back into his house. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. In other words, I was glad, I was happy to be able to go where I can hear the word of God. Be able to go where I can get instructions on how to live a clean and holy life. I was able to get out of my bed this morning and to go, I got to put a praise on it. I got to thank him. Why? Because he didn't have to wake me this morning. I got to thank him. Why? He didn't have to give me the strength to get out of the bed this morning. I got to praise him. Why? He didn't have to provide a roof over my head, clothes on my back, shoes on my feet. He didn't have to do all of that. But because he did it, I'm going to praise him each and every day just for that. Even if he doesn't do anything else for me, he's already done enough. And I thank him each and every day for all of the things that he has blessed us with. It goes on. It said, praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him for everything that he's done. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Why? Because God is great and he's what? Greatly to be praised. Amen. And because of that, that's enough to praise God. That's enough. Nobody should have to pump and prime you to get you to praise God. Because if you would just let your mind run back. And think about all the things that he's brought you through. Think about all the things that he's delivered you from. Think about all the ways that he's made. It won't take long for you to begin to pray, God, why? Because you know that you know that you know. If it had not been for the Lord that was on your side, you don't know where you would be. That accident could have took you out, but God. That sickness could have took you out. But God, that person that was getting on your nerve, they could have still been there. But God moved them out of the way for the reason of allowing you to be able to focus on him. A lot of times we put our focus on things that we shouldn't. And that's the reason why we can't praise God the way we want to. We're so focused on what other people are going to say. We're so focused on how they're going to feel. We're so focused on people looking at us and maybe poking fun at our praise. But the fact that the matter is, baby, you can poke fun at my praise. You can talk about my praise. But at the end of the day, my praise and my worship are for real. Why? Because I'm praising and worshiping a true and living God. So you can say what you want to. Do what you want to. But at the end of the day, I'm going to continue to praise him. Why? Because he has all power in his hand. Why? Because if it had not been for him, I don't know where I'd be right now. And you go, it goes on. We look at, at Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. Joshua then was facing that big city walled all up. And it's kind of funny to me sometimes when I talk about the story of Joshua. Because they were saying how the city was walled up. Everybody was shut up behind the wall. Why? Because the children of Israel were out there. The thing is, they knew that the children of Israel didn't come by themselves. They had heard about what God had done for them. How many battles God had blessed them to win. So everybody was shut up behind the wall. They were scared to see what they were going to do. And they just marched. Every day. You got some folk in your life. <laughs> Glory to God. You got people in your life and in this world that don't want to do nothing but cause drama, mess, and trouble. That's all they do. They eat, sleep, and walk. Drama, mess, and trouble. They love to mistreat people and talk about folk and put them down. But I'm here to tell you, each and every day, just get up and smile and keep on walking. Why? Because you look much better when you smile. And then you got a reason to smile. Why? Because God's on your side. He's got your back. So just get up and just keep on going. 
Get up, get dressed, keep on going to work. Don't don't say, I'm not going to work because I'm tired of dealing with this. I'm tired of dealing with that. Baby, just keep going a little while longer. God is about to break something through for you. God is about to open a door for you. God is about to change some stuff for you. God is about to move some folk out of your path that don't need to be there. So they got up and they marched every day. Didn't say one word. And one thing, me and my wife was, was talking about this a while back. And you know how sometimes people would do something to you and you just kind of look at them with a funny grin or, or you just don't say nothing about it. And what happens? That makes that other person a little worried. That makes them a little scared because they're like, now I know what, what I did and I know what I said and I should have got a different type of reaction out of you than what I'm getting. And because I'm not getting a reaction out of you, now I'm a little worried about what you're going to do. Well, the thing is, don't worry about what I'm going to do. Just worry about who I'm going to talk to. I'm going to talk to God about it. I'm not going to do anything to you. I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to walk around in silence and pray and ask God, Lord, you know what happened. You know what went on. I just need you to fix it. And that's what Joshua and them were doing. God had already promised them to see it. They already knew that the battle was already there. All they had to do was just do what God told them to do and just keep marching. They went down there and they marched every day. Didn't say one mumbling word. But on the seventh day, and the seventh time, the Lord told him, go ahead and shout. Why? Because the victory is already yours. Go ahead and shout because I'm going to give you this city. Go ahead and shout because I'm going to turn this thing around just for you. And I'm here to tell somebody that's watching me right now, go on and shout. God is about to open a door for you. Go ahead and shout. God is about to make a way out of no way for you. Go ahead and shout because God is about to perform a miracle in your life that you never thought possible. Go ahead on and praise him right there where you are. Whether you're riding down the road or you're sitting in your home, go ahead on and praise him right now, baby, like it's already done. Why? Because God is about to do something for you that you never thought possible. All you got to do is just keep on praising him in the midst of that trouble. Keep on praising him in the midst of that sickness. It doesn't matter what's going on. Just keep praising God. Joshua then marched around. Seven, the number seven is a number of completion. So when they completed everything, God told them, go ahead and shout. And when they began to shout, the walls became began to come tumbling down. When you begin to shout, the enemy can't stay around you. When you begin to shout, trouble got to flee. When you begin to shout, sickness got to go. When you begin to shout, poverty got to leave. When you begin to shout, God will become begin to come in and dwell among you when you begin to praise him. And it doesn't matter how you praise him, just as long as you praise him. And the reason I said that, I heard a story about T.D. Jakes when he was saying that early on in his ministry, he had a lady that was in his congregation that had had a stroke. And uh, matter of fact, her name was Mother Barksdale. And Mother Barksdale was one of the ones that always shouted at church, always enjoyed herself in church. And for some reason or another, she wound up having a stroke. And when she had the stroke, she was in the hospital. And he was a little timid about going to visit her because he didn't know what type of reaction Mother Barksdale was going to have because now she's had a stroke and she lost half of the activity of half of her body. So he went to visit her and he said the closer he could get to the room, he could hear somebody shout. He could hear, hey, glory, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And he was like, I wonder what's going on. And when he opened the door, he noticed that Mother Barksdale had took the good hand and had it holding up the bad hand. And she was still praising God. I'm here to tell you, she was shouting on a hand. Some of us in this life, we're shouting on a hand. You may not have everything you want, but shout anyway. You may not be able to use the whole full activity of your body, but whatever you got, Give God praise with what you have. Why? Because God will take a little and turn it into a lot. She prays him no matter what, even though it looked like a hopeless situation, but Mother Barksdale praised God anyway. Why? Because I know that I know that I know God will turn this thing around. So we got to put a praise on. So after Joshua then walked around the city and the wall came tumbling down, God began to bless them. God blessed them with the things that, that he had already promised them that they would have. Look at Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and the children of Israel. They had so many enemies coming all over the place trying to attack them. And they didn't know what to do. But Jehoshaphat stealed the people and told them, said, we're going to pray about this thing. 
And as they began to pray, God raised up somebody out of that congregation and spoke to them and told them, so don't worry about the battle. So the battle is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. And the thing that we have to learn to do is be still and know that God is in control. And when we're still and allowing God to do just what he needs to do in our life, God will take control. You can sit back and just praise him. Why? I know God's going to already work this out. I, I, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to be troubled about it no more. I'm putting it in God's hand. God's going to work it out. So what? While I know he's going to work it out, I'm going to praise him in advance. And you know what? I, I don't need a big congregation to praise God. I don't need a whole lot of folk to get my praise on. I can praise God all by myself. I can praise him while I'm riding down the road. I can praise him while I'm sitting in my house all alone. I don't need a whole lot of folk. Why? Because I know what God has done for me. I know how far God has brought me. I know the ways he's made for me. I know the change that he's made in our life. I know how far he brought me and my family from. I know what God does for us. So it don't take a whole lot for me to praise God. All I know is God is good. And because he's good, I know that, hey, he loves me. And because I know he loves me, that's enough for me to praise him right there. I can throw my hands up and just praise God. Not only can I throw my hands up, but every now and then, well, even when I'm by myself, I get my I can get my step on, get in on a good foot. I may not can move like I used to move, but the fact of the matter is I thank God. I don't need no music to get my praise on because I know how good he is. Every now and then, I can think about it in my head and I just start patting my feet and I start moving around. Why? Because God gave me the activity of my limb. Why? Because God gave me all of the blessings that I have. And because of that, it don't take much for me to get my back to sit on. Why? Because God is a good God. And he's greatly to be praised. Glory to God. I may not have as much energy as I used to have. And I may can't dance as long as I would love to dance. But the fact of the matter is, I'm going to give him praise with what little bit I got. I'm going to give him the joy, the joy because he gives me the joy of my salvation, which is him. He's my everything. Why? So I'm going to give him praise with whatever I can. I'm going to give him praise with my lips. Why? Because if I can't sing like I used to sing, it doesn't matter. I'm going to still sing as long as it sounds good to him. It says, to God be the glory for the great thing that he has done. Don't let nothing that you're dealing with or going through in your life stop you from praising God. Maybe somebody hear what I said. Don't let nothing or anything that you're going through in your life stop you from praising God. A lot of us allow so much stuff to stop us from praising him. We allow people to stop us from praising him. We allow circumstances to stop us from praising him. We allow our current sickness to stop us from praising him. But you can't do that. Keep praising God no matter what. No matter what happens, no matter what's going on, keep praising. Don't get lost in the darkness. Don't get lost in the pain. Don't get lost in the issues. Don't get lost in the folk. But just start praising. Put a praise on it right there. Why? Because God's going to bring you out of that darkness. God's going to bring you out of that sickness. God's going to bring you out of that issue. All you got to do is just keep praising. David praised God so much. So David, what, what did he do in Psalm, in our second Samuel chapter 6 and verse 14? David danced completely out of his clothes. He prayed God with all of his might. We got to praise God with everything we have. Why? Because he gave us everything we got. So I'm going to give him my praise for what he's done for me. The ways he's made. Everything that he's done is a reason to praise God. It's a reason to praise him. Church, we got a reason. We got a right to praise God. Put a praise on him. You say, well, I don't know if that house is going to come through. Praise God anyway. If it's meant for you to have it, you'll have it. I don't know. Is this job going to open up for me? It doesn't matter. Just keep praising God for it. If it's meant for you to have it, God's going to work it out for you. God's going to open that door for you. I don't understand what's going on with this, that, and the other. Put a praise on it, baby. Just praise God anyhow, no matter what's going on. That's why I love the story about the young man called Shouting John. Shouting John didn't care where he shouted at. Didn't care how he shouted. It didn't matter. He walked up in that church. Yeah, there was some dignified people up in there. And folk didn't believe in this and that and the other. But the fact of the matter is when the service got high, John got up. John started dancing, shouting all around the church. The deacon would go and sit him down. He jumped back up. They tried to hold his hand. His legs were gone. They tried to hold his legs. His hands were gone. Their feet went to go. It was like fire shut up in his bones. And they couldn't understand it. They didn't like it. So they decided we got to go out to John's house. Doesn't even know we don't act like that at our church. 
Doesn't he know that we got dignified people in our church? We going out there. So they rode all out to his house. John was out there plowing. John looked around and said, hold me. John looked at him and said, brother, I already know why you come out here. You come out here to tell me that I praise the Lord too much. You come out here to tell me that I dance too much. And one of the deacons told me, if you don't stop shouting and you don't stop dancing, we're going to put you out of our church. John said, well, put me out. He said, I can't hold my peace. He said, you see all of that land that you just drove up on. God gave me all of that land, but you don't want me to dance in your church. He said, you see all of my children. Not one time have I been to the courthouse. Not one time have I been to the cemetery. Not one time have I been to the jailhouse. And you don't want me to dance in your church. He said, listen, Brother Deacon, if you don't want me to shout in your church, hold my mule. It doesn't matter. I'm going to shout right here. Why? Because I know that I know that I know that God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. I understand and know that no matter what I'm dealing with, God will make a way out of no way. And I'm talking to somebody this morning. I don't care what it is. I don't care how hard it gets. Just keep on praising. Keep on trusting. Keep on believing. Why? Because God will make a way out of no way. God will turn that situation around for you if you just allow him to do it. If you get out of the way and allow God to step in, he will Turn that thing around. Whew. Church, let me get out of here. The clock on the wall said, uh, that's all. It's been real fun, but Reverend McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. But after a while, crocodile. I'm sorry, but the reason I prayed him is because he brought me from a mighty long way. The reason I put a praise on him because I know that God is not through with us yet. The reason I keep putting a praise on it because I know that God's about to open some doors for us. God's about to perform some miracles for us. And I'm here to tell somebody, you better keep on praising him. You better keep on shouting. You better keep on trusting him. You better keep on believing him. Why? Because God will do anything but fail. God will make a way out of nowhere. God will turn your situation around. God will step into your issue and make everything all right. All you got to do is trust him. All you got to do is call him. All you got to do is believe him. And all you got to do is keep praising him. Praising him for what he's done. Praise him for what he's doing and praise him for what he's going to do. Glory be to God. Every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why? Because he's a good God. God is great and he's greatly to be praised. So for those of you, no matter what you're going through, no matter what you're dealing with today, keep putting the praise on it. Keep shouting no matter what. Keep putting it in his hand. Why? Because the best is yet to come. Have a blessed day.